Magnum P.I. That was one of our um, favorite shows for a time before Hawaii Five O made its rebound. Well, the interesting thing I, I heard about this is that it was originally going to be set in Bel Air, California. It was not going to be set in Hawaii. It was supposed to be called H.H. H. Flynn, and the leading character's name was Cutter. But it was coming on about the time that um, CBS was losing a major show in Hawaii, Hawaii Five O, and they said, you know, we've got the sound stage there, we've got all these people that have been terrific for us. Why don't we move the show to Honolulu? So they changed the name from H H Flynn to Magnum PI. Which sounds much more exciting, mm -hmm. right? That's right. And uh, instead of Cutter, he was, you know, Magnum. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the interesting things uh, about the show is that Frank Sinatra's last role was on Magnum P.I., and I have mm. a picture of him. He was in many movies, and for instance, when his career was uh, in the doldrums, From Here to Eternity revived it. He was uh, nominated for an Oscar for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but his last role in, in film or movies was on Magnum P.I. He said that Tom and he had so much fun that they should uh, create a new series, just the two of them carousing around together. Well, you know, I, I've seen Hawaii, speaking of From Here to Eternity and From Here to Eternity Beach, I've seen Hawaii Five O, the new Hawaii Five O filming there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see it That's again. True. Yep. Um, okay, so Shiro Matsuo. Tell me about him. Well, when Shiro... Oh, okay. is it him, right? That's Shiro. Yeah. Shiro Saimin. Yeah, Shiro. Uh, he, he took Saimin mm -hmm. and he elevated it from a snack into a meal. And if you go to his three restaurants today, you can find 62 different varieties of Saimin there. Wow. Now, he started off as a latrine orderly in the army. And he decided he'd be the best latrine orderly there could possibly be. And it's, you know, it's a genius idea. You know, if you do a great job at whatever job they give you, there, someone will notice and they will pick you. And he got brought into the cafeteria where he learned to cook. And from there, he became the personal chef of Governor Burns. Oh, wow. It's great. You're making me hungry, by the way. No, Talking about we all can this go out to lunch after this. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, speaking of John Burns, what about John Burns? Here's another story about him. A lot of people don't know that John Burns was a police captain during World War II, and he was in charge of espionage. And he was a part of a three-person panel that investigated local Americans of Japanese ancestry mm -hmm. who were suspected of being susp spies. Mm -hmm. He says they never found any evidence that any local AJA was spying for Japan. Mm -hmm. And so he refused to uh, vote for internment. He says the FBI guy went along with him. The Navy guy always voted for internment. He probably saved 10,000 people locally from being interned. Almost all the Americans of Japanese ancestry on the mainland were interned. And he probably saved their property, their in, you know, their, for, their fortunes, whatever they could, because a lot of that was lost when the people were interned, right? And they returned the favor to him when he ran for uh, Congress and then later for governor. Yep. That's how his rise to power, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, what about Duke Kahanamoku? He's one of our favorite. We've talked about him on the show before. Well, a lot of people don't know that Duke didn't know what to do with himself after the Olympics. He says, out of the water, I am nothing. And so he floundered for a little bit. Uh, and then the uh, head of Union Oil said, would you like to run a couple gas stations? So he had a gas station in Nuuanu and another one on Kalakau and Seaside. So the, the sh the, what is now the Chevron station at Paoa and Nuuanu was his Union Oil station oh. in 1936. He then ran for uh, sheriff. Mm -hmm. And so he only had the station for about a year. But uh, he finally found himself and he became the official ambassador of the state. That's a perfect job for him. Such an amazing man. A woman that I know who just passed away this year, Cody Austin Cook, won Hawaii's first women's golf uh, tournament ever in 1933. Mm -hmm. And she said uh, her family pulled into his service station, and he popped his head in the window, and he said, hey, Cody, that was some great golf you played. She was just shocked that he knew who she was. She was only a 14-year-old Punahou girl at the time. Mm -hmm. Smart man. Okay, so what about King Kalakaua? You have um, a story about him. Well, King Kalakaua went to Japan and offered an alliance with Emperor Meiji. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, we're both island nations. Uh, we have a lot in common. We're surrounded by powerful you know, forces of uh, big nations. We should form an alliance. And to seal the deal, he offered Princess Kailani's hand in marriage to a royal prince. Mm -hmm. She was five years old. Oh, my goodness. He was 35 years old. His, prin his name was Prince Komatsu. Mm -hmm. And uh, he declined. 
He looks like a stern character. <laughs> he, he was a military genius, uh -huh. uh, and he, they said he was already engaged. Mm -hmm. But I can you imagine no. if they had actually said yes? Right. If she had gone to Japan and produced royal children, would they have been able to bomb Pearl Harbor? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think not. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. It would have changed history. Kalakaua, by the way, was the first person in uh, em, uh, first person uh, emperor king head of state to go on a round the world trip you know we have uh, actually only gone through well we've gone through a lot of your stories but uh, we're running out of time so I want to give you a little bit of time to tell people where to buy the companies we keep three well they can buy it at companies we keep dot com uh, website that I've created uh, they can buy it at almost every local bookstore so, yeah, so do you think next year you'll be coming out with the companies we keep for? Uh, well, probably every two years. Every two years. I, I, it, it is just maddening trying to, et, you know, do the writing, the yeah. editing, the interviewing. I love the entree that people give me to interview them and sit down with them, but uh, it drives right. me crazy. Well, we're out of time, so I just want to thank everybody for joining us today. This has been News Behind the News. I'm Malia Zimmerman, and we'll have Bob Siegel and his next book on again. Aloha.